What's the word, y'all? I was about to say the offseason is all but over, but that's cap. Just 48 hours ago, we got some more Kevin Durant news. For 95% of NBA teams, the offseason is over, which means that we can start looking at rosters and trying to figure out if people had successful offseasons. Because listen, no team is perfect. Even the goal to save Warriors, a team that one could, could improve in different areas. So Bleach Report put together an article, has every NBA team fixed its biggest weaknesses offseason? We're going to see if we agree or disagree what they determine the weaknesses for these organizations and see if we agree or disagree on whether or not they filled those roles. And I know you see me sporting one of the new Enjoy Basketball drops um, very, very soon. This is just one of the pieces. There are a lot of pieces in this drop. This is one of the pieces. And if you want to know more about what's in this drop, we're doing a sneak peek over there in the newsletter. So hit that link in the description and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to open up the newsletter if you're already subscribed. And we're doing these VIP boxes. We've sent it out to some of the, my NBA friends, some people I know in the, in the world. And we got some for y'all as well. But we can only give them out to people on the newsletter. So if you want a VIP box that's going to have a plethora of things from this drop, hit that link in the description, man. W promo read if you ask me. Seriously, though. I just got my own package in of this new Enjoy Basketball drop. It's elite. You do not want to miss out. Just know it's coming up, and if you want more information, the newsletter is the way. All right, are we ready for this? Shout out to Greg over at Bleach Report. Let's see what they're talking about with the Atlanta Hawks first. He's saying that their biggest weakness was their wing defense, and I think I can somewhat agree with that. Um, in this offseason, they added DeJounte Murray, who's the youngest all-defensive player of all time, if I'm not mistaken. Guard. Guard. I think guard. If I'm not mistaken... Tim Duncan did that very early on, but Tim Duncan, I, I, I'm going to go with guard without fact-checking nothing. Also brought in the Holiday brother. In that DNA, if your last name is Holiday, more likely than not, you're going to be a plus defender. Now, Aaron is a little bit smaller than the other one, so it's harder to be a plus defender at that size, but he gives us all. But that Holiday blood, they, they preach defense in the household, and they, they got that. He's as consistent as a lot of people. And the A.J. Griffin, I don't know how much PT he'll get as a rookie, but everybody knows one of his things was defense. Actually, I don't know if that's true. I didn't watch him in college. Uh, but I, I can see. Finishing 26. 26 is kind of wild for where they were just last season. Anyway, uh, they needed improvements on the wing. Of course, there's some chemistry stuff. And now they got DeJounte Murray, um, who's a menace, as we've seen this offseason. So, according to Greg, yes, they fixed those problems. The Boston Celtics. What am I guessing the Boston Celtics biggest hole was that's we talk about a team that just made a finals run I, uh, I, I I think that maybe it is somebody to put more pressure on the rim and I would say you did that with getting Malcolm Brogdon because one thing I found out is some research is Malcolm Brogdon was like fifth in the league at finishing amongst like qualified people um he's like fifth and I didn't really look at him as like an elite level finisher but he was like that let's see what he says back up big okay I can see that as well um I think this only matters in the regular season, you know what I'm saying? Because when Rob is in foul trouble, injured, or needs his breathers, that's when Al is there and vice versa. But in the regular season, yeah, you probably want a third string slash another big. That's where you get the Daniel Tyson's of the world to just soak up some minutes. Once we get to the postseason, I don't think it really matters because we saw that you can have Al be the five or Rob be the five. But he says something right here that I guess I agree with. Um, you just don't want to add more things to Al Horford's work workload. So adding another big would have helped. But instead, they got Gallinari, who doesn't really become a five unless he's a small ball five, which I guess we have seen a little bit in his career, but not a ton. Not enough for me to feel confident that he can do that. The Brooklyn Nets are next. Uh, they got too many problems for me to even guess. What are they saying? Rim protection? Okay. Um, I can't say that they fixed that then. There's always a fly. I can't say that they fixed that because they're looking at Nicholas Claxton as the fix. You can't say you fixed the problem by bringing back a guy that was on the team when the problem existed. You know what I'm saying? So they got other stuff to worry about. This is the least of their worries. Charlotte. Any just center play in general? Rim protection. They got Mark Williams. And he says this should be the fix because Williams was an all-world rim protector in college. We'll see if that is true. Um, Chicago, I'm guessing, I, I can see the picture of Drummond. They're going to talk about just defense at the rim, just having somebody that can prevent other teams from laying the ball up every possession. And that is exactly what they're saying, rim protection. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. Um, he's one of the better backup centers in all of basketball, but I don't look at 
and Andre Drummond as a deterrence at the rim for other teams. He does a lot of things really solid, but I'm not looking at him as the savior of Chicago Bulls rim protection defense. He's definitely a step up, at least on the second unit that we've had in previous in the last season between Tony Bradley or Derrick Jones Jr. playing back of five. He's an upgrade there, but he doesn't fit the overall problem. And that's what they're saying. Not really. He's a better defender than Vooch, but he's not plus. Um, what are we saying? For Cleveland Cavaliers, I would guess that, that okay, let's just tell me. Wing depth, and they got um Oche Abaje, o, Ochai Abaje, dang. I got to watch him play one more game of basketball, and I'll know his name. And they're saying, yes, it was fixed because he actually wasn't too bad when I saw in Summer League, and he projects to be a, a good shooter and stuff. We talked about it on my episode when I was bringing – um, the chase down pod to talk about Cavaliers. We talked about him and his ability to knock down shots and also defend. Because uh, knocking out shots is something they need. They had a lot of Isaac Okoro who doesn't really do that. Oche can potentially do it. Next we have Dallas. Hmm. Um, they're saying, okay, a second option and you got that. Or no. This team needed to add to the doncic Brunson combo, not lose one of the... Okay, I didn't look at it from that perspective. I cannot say I disagree. Um, I think this team looks a lot better and has another chance to go to the conference finals if Jalen Brunson is there. I don't like their chances now that Jalen Brunson is gone and you have these other teams that are going to be healthy between Denver and the Clippers and the stuff like that. Um, losing Jalen Brunson is going to hurt. And I know you try to cover the band-aid a little bit by saying that we have Christian Wood, who's good, but you're losing a lot. And what made your team pretty solid last season with that secondary ball handler that just, just adds a different amount of pressure to the rim as Luka. And Luka already puts a lot of pressure on the rim. Just having another guy to do that and you kind of taking that away by allowing him to go to New York. So I understand them saying no, but I also do like the Christian Wood acquisition. It's like, you know, I don't no, bro, I think Denver was just going to be solid by being healthy. What are they saying? They are saying just perimeter defense. And if that is the pro if that was the problem, then they did that. Katavis Carwell Pope is one of the best 3 and D uh, wings in basketball. Bruce Brown defends his butt off. Not that good of a three-point shooter, but has his moments. And I don't know anything about Christian Braun or Brown or whatever. But yeah, if that is the problem, then they 100% achieved that. Uh, fixing that with Katavis Carwell Pope, who I think is one of the more underrated pickups this season through that trade. Detroit is weird because they're a rebuilding team. So why did he say their problem was shooting? And he said that they did not improve that by picking up Jaden Ivey, who's more of a creator, more than a pure shooter. I'm assuming that's what he's saying. Um, Burks will help, but this is still projects to be a, a bottom five team in three-point shooting. Sure, I said projects. Projects. Either way, they got it. Okay, Warriors. What? Okay, so we're talking about a team coming off a championship win. What do I think is the biggest hole in their team? Probably has something to do with non-Steph Curry minutes. Let's see what they're saying. Back up one. That, that kind of works, right? That kind of works. And if that is a problem, he's saying that kind of fit the problem. Um, because Jordan Poole and Dante DiVincenzo and, and Draymond Green can all, you know, do a little bit of everything. Uh, but it is what it is. Houston Rockets... I uh, don't know. Let's see. Point guard. They say Tata Washington is not yet the fix. But I do like Tata's game, man. I don't know if he's going to be the point guard of the future over there in Houston. But I do like Tata. Again, I've said it a hundred times on this channel. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Tari Eason is my favorite rookie in this year's class. I'm going to say it every time until people realize that Tari Eason is really that nice. And I think most, a lot of people do realize that. Um, Indiana. It's hard to say with Indiana, bro, just because... When you're talking about rebuilding teams, there's a lot of weaknesses. So what are we determining is the biggest weakness? They're saying a starting power forward. And they're saying that they potentially fixed that with Jalen Smith, who, again, I made a whole video about being my, one of my favorite young players in basketball. So I hope that he is that guy. Um, Clippers, point guard play has been the thing for the Clippers. Also health, but we're talking about offseason acquisitions and stuff. Point guard play has always been the thing with the Clippers with, with Paul George and Kawhi. And they are saying that they fixed that with John Wall. Cool. I think I think so, too. Again, we don't know exactly what we're going to get from John Wall. But whatever we do get is a plus to what they weren't going to get without him. And it, it's the most friendly deal you can ask for. If John Wall comes in and is too egocentric, which he's not because he's already talking about how he's a Robin and he's less than Robin. He can just not play for y'all. You know what I'm saying? It was a, a low-risk, high-reward signing, and I really like it for them. 
The Lakers, oh my God. Oh, what was the Lakers' problem this season? Uh, how much time we got? <laughs> how much time we got? They're saying it was wing defense, and they're saying that they didn't adjust that or, or, or get anything for that at all. I cannot disagree with that. Um, I'm just happy that they're a younger team than they were last year. I think that's a step in the right direction. But overall, the offseason is still weird. I mean, it will be a lot better if you can somehow – find Kyrie on this roster, which I guess is a possibility, but I've read a lot of stuff saying that Kyrie is and the Nets are preparing for him to be back next season. But reports are just that, and we'll see if something materializes outside of that. Memphis, talk to me. Um, sh Overall shooting, all right? And they're saying improvements were made for sure. The Grizzlies either added or re-signed key shot makers with Green serving as a wild card here. I don't know how much of Danny Green we're going to get this season because... In one of the last games of the season, he tore his ACL. I think the Miami Heat could use just more shot creation outside of Tyler Hero and Jimmy Buckets. They are saying that their biggest weakness was playmaking. Um, and they said that they fixed it mostly. Milwaukee Bucks, um, they could just use more bodies, more healthy bodies. Feels like we got down to the nitty-gritty the last couple weeks, months of the season. It just felt like they were missing guys and they were playing people that they didn't necessarily want to. They're saying wing depth, which is similar, I guess, to what I was saying. And they said that they didn't fix that because Joe Ingles can't play right now. He also suffered an ACL tear, which is weird that he got like a $5 million contract off an of ACL tear. I mean, go get your money, Joe Ingles. He was already an older guy after being 34 years old. So I don't I don't know. I, maybe we look back and be like, oh, that was one of the best signings of the offseason. Or maybe we look back and be like, dang, that was kind of a waste. I don't know. Minnesota Timberwolves, I mean, okay. Um, just talk to me. All right, I, the guess the game is over, y'all. Let's just read the article. Minnesota Timberwolves wing depth. They're talking about Kyle Anderson, Brent Forbes, and Torian Prince. And they achieved that, man. I think that Kyle Anderson, there, there are a few signs this offseason. I absolutely love Kyle Anderson was one of them. We also have, like, Isaiah Hardenstein, um, who I really love as well. My, my favorite sign of all of the offseason. Kyle Anderson is up there as well. This is why in the other video from a little while ago, I said that the Minnesota Timberwolves are must-see TV for me or a team that I would not miss watching. They just added a lot of things that I'm extremely interested in, and Kyle Anderson is one of them. Um, I don't know how he's going to perform, but he's a good basketball player, so I think he'll figure it out. The spacing will be a little bit iffy, though. The spacing is going to be a little bit iffy. Um, you don't have all the time in the world to take a shot. Pelicans. I think the Pelicans might have something to do with not creation. Shot making. Because creation, they got that. They got Brandon Ingram. They're going to have Zion back. They're going to have CJ. These are creators. They need just people that can make shots. Shooting. Boom. And if that's the case, they did not fix it. Yeah, they're saying that they didn't fix that. I'll take my dub on that one. The Knicks. I think the Knicks overall needed hope. Like, if the Knicks would have came into the offseason with just bringing back the same dudes, all Knicks fans across the world would be disappointed because they had lost hope because that team last year underperformed. Signing Jalen Brunson brings in hope for the organization. So I know that's not what they're going to say, but that's the way I'm feeling. Point guard play. Oh, Kim, come on, man. It's right there. Uh, they haven't had a real point guard in a very long time in New York, and they got one in Jalen Brunson. So absolutely. The Thunder Wings. Okay. I mean, sure. And yeah, they fixed that because they had a million draft picks. So I, I guess that's true. Orlando Magic. They have so much stuff over there. Talk to me. Wings. It feels like Wings... Is the cop out answer for a team that's young that's trying to rebuild? Uh, Philly, what could Philly? They the Philly Philly needed players with that dog in them. Even Joel and B said it. They need players with the dog in it in them, and they they got that. Yeah, give me that. Okay, perimeter defense, not the same, but PJ got that. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to James Harden for taking the financial flexibility route, and they got the thing. So yes, they got a, got the dog in them. And PJ, I even say Daniel House got a little bit of that as well. Think about what he did in the bubble. Um, and the Anthony Melton too. So, yeah. The Suns. Talk to me. Front court versatility. And they did not improve on that. So a lot of things to be said about the Suns offseason. I, I was going to make a video. Um, but I was in Texas when they when it, when all things happened with around DeAndre Aiden. By the time I came back, it wasn't even a trending topic no more. But, yeah. They, they paid him. That's all that matters at the end of the day. They're talking about Dario Sarge. I need to watch to see how good Dario Sarge is in this. Uh, is it FIBA? Is it the Olympics? I'm so confused on that stuff. He's playing for his, his home country, and I can't wait to watch him. I need to see what he's doing. The Trailblazers needed to improve, like, overall other side of the ball. We know that they're going to be able to score because Damian Lillard is there, and, and 
He is an offense in himself. And I am right, okay? Listen, I ain't getting them all right, but the ones I'm guessing, I'm doing all right. Uh, and they said mostly with Jeremy Grant and, and Gary Payton a second. I think the Sacramento Kings needed shooting. And they said swings. Okay. I mean, I made a video about De'Aaron Fox and how he didn't have any space in last season. This one and the other. Spurs, I had nothing. Volume shooting. Sh sure. Sure. The Raptors. The Raptors needed bodies. This man, Nick Nurse, was running a seven-man rotation for the second half of the season. Wing depth, I'll take that. And sure, they did it. I didn't know what to expect from the Jazz. Okay, yeah, they needed perimeter defense, but then they traded the big guys, so it doesn't really matter. The Washington Wizards probably needed a facilitator. The last year they made the playoffs, even though, again, it wasn't a great record if you watched my Russell Westbrook video. Um, Russell Westbrook was their point guard, and they, he helped them go to the playoffs. Last year, they didn't really have any like good point guard play. Point guard. Got it. Got it. Uh, Monte Morris, DeLon Wright, and Johnny Davis. So they have a point guard that you trust. Obviously, you know, it's tears to point guards, but you have one you can trust. And I think that's a success. So not a bad article. Not a bad article at all. Let me know what you think. What did your team desperately need? And tell me if they were successful in getting those things. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe. Again, the newsletter is down below if you want some joy. You want the shirts. You want the hoodies. I, I, listen, I'm talking too much. But there's more to that drop. I'll see y'all soon.